Today I will give more examples about object-oriented programming in C++. So basically if you didn't get any details before, we will go over a lot of examples to illustrate the capabilities of object-oriented programming such that you can grasp the key concepts. Also, of course, today you will see more real-world examples such that you understand how we can model using object-oriented principles. So we will look at previous examples. We will look at some new examples. One is the bank account, vehicles. A new concept that we'll talk about today in more detail is the visibility of inheritance. And then we will compare structures versus classes and we look at more examples, persons and students. So let's go back to our cake class. On the left hand side we saw that we can have a UML representation, a UML class diagram that then can be very easily mapped directly to a C++ header file. Here we see a cake and we saw in the UML we have the visibility here indicated with hash minus and plus. So public is plus means accessible by anyone trying to use a cake object. We placed here the, the functions and when we talk about functions in C++ they are actually called methods or member functions because they are tied to an instance of the class cake. So in that sense they have access to any variable, any data member and here as data member we have slices I slices as an integer and B, B plate. So we have here our methods which are kind of operations that we can do and this was a base class and when we try to inherit from this class we can add a new class called long cake here. We use the colon to indicate from which class we would try to inherit from. Here we try to inherit from the class cake. So a long cake has basically the same members as the class cake plus it has its own constructor over here. In the car example we looked before at the code in C++ only. So we have a class car here which has as a public interface the implementations of the methods for get registration, get color, set registration and set color. And those functions they access directly in this case the private data members which are of type integer, registration and color here. So you, using those functions here you can access those data members but these are very simple simplistic functions in this case that just kind of pass through the data. So how would we use a constructor or any object that we try to create? Well when we try to create it on the stack we just give the name of the class here car was the name and then we create an instance by giving a variable name so an identifier, a valid identifier like my Porsche 1. Here we specify actually uh, some arguments to the constructor trying to specify more information about the object. Here for example license plate, the name of the car, what brand like Porsche and the color like green. So we can at construction time when we instantiate an object set certain data properties to different to differentiate the different variables, the different instances of the object. Now we we did not look initially for car at the constructors, but we will do that as part of this lecture today again. So here's an example for a bank account. What do we need to model a bank account? Well a bank account has maybe an account number right? It has to be identified. And the bank account has certainly a balance which is the amount of money that you have currently deposited. You may also need use additional data such as the overdraft limit, information about the account holder and so forth. Yeah and we can we can do that. The question is what kind of operations could be useful for a bank account to specify its behavior. Think about it for three minutes, try to write down, similarly as here in a UML notation, some methods that might be useful. Yeah, and pause now the video and I will resume in 
three, two, one. Okay, welcome back. Here are some ideas. So some kind of operations that we need. We certainly need to create and open a bank account. You need to be able to close a bank account. Um, you may want to get the balance, the current balance. So the creation, the deletion can be done probably with the uh, destructor and the constructor. In the constructor may want to specify how much money initially is deposited. So get balance here returns a float. To withdraw, we, we may want to withdraw money. So here we give an argument how much money we try to withdraw. We want to deposit additional money. And lastly, most importantly, we want to transfer money between two bank accounts. So this can be done by saying specifying yet another account as an account where we want to transfer money to using call by reference here because we want to make modifications to this specific account and an amount of money. And this function method can return true if it works, otherwise it should return false. So a key question it might be, how can you actually implement a function transfer money? So this transfer money, right, it should take the money from this current account and transfer it to the account it specified as two, a certain amount of money and return true if it works, otherwise false. Think about the implementation for three minutes and then proceed with the video, please. I will continue now in three, two, one. So here's now a potential implementation of transfer money. Note that we have replicated here the signature of the function, which returns bool, and this function shall below be a member fun function of the class account. That's why we see here with two columns the name of the class, and we implement it separately in a CPP file, so that's why we have to spe specify the namespace here. So what we should do is we should first check the balance of the current account. If this is less than amount of money that we try to transfer, that shouldn't work, right? Except if you have overdraft, but you didn't implement it. So in this case, we should return false. Otherwise, we know we, we have the amount of money available. So what we should do, we take the account two, and then for this account, we add the balance, the amount, and then from our current account, we subtract the amount of money. So here's an example how we could use it. We create an account A that has 100 whatever money on it, and account B, and as we don't specify the constructor explicitly, it has is initialized with zero, we can assume. Now we transfer from A to B 10 whatever amount of money. So that's a potential way of using this function. And note that it's very important really to use the call by reference here, because if I use call by value, you would have created a copy of an, this object B here. And to this copy, we would have in this line added the amount of money. But after we leave the, the scope of this function, we would have destructed this object. And so the money would be transferred to Nirvana, so to speak. Yeah? Try it out if you like, and this is really an important concept. Good, we looked also at the vehicle class hierarchy when we talked about uh, inheritance. So we had seen that the vehicle is a very general concept. And we have seen specializations such as a family car or a van or a bicycle. That over a hierarchy of inheritance um, can be built that specify more and more about this specific object. So family car is a car with certain properties. A car is a motorized vehicle. Motorized vehicle has certain properties compared to a normal vehicle, right? such as an engine, for instance. So talking about mo motorized vehicle, we said that when you have a, a parent class and a child class, and there is this direct inheritance, we say that the child is class is a parent class. So a motorized vehicle is a vehicle, but we also had the second relationship, which was the aggregation relationship. So a motorized vehicle has an engine, for example. So in this case, aggregation and so on can be done by placing an engine class as a data element as part of our motorized vehicle. Now, a motorized vehicle consists of an engine or has an engine. Yeah, so that's the idea. 
So here in fact is the class hierarchy from the UML a bit illustrated with the declarations of the classes. So we see class vehicle, we have a public interface a func a method like get brand, get color, set brand and set color. Private, we have those member variables, brand and color. And then we have our motorized vehicle. And motorized vehicle is a vehicle, so it inherits from vehicle using the UML notation here. And it has um, a new method, which we say start moving, probably starting the engine or something like that. And then we have as a private member an engine, which is a diesel engine here as a variable name. Yeah. So the engine has additional me methods here and data, such as start engine, stop engine, add fuel, get fuel level, and privately it has a fuel level, for example. So you can think of that the start moving method over here calls, if this is called, that this calls the start engine as part of the engine. 